it's a completely original story that I was really taken with because the characters are very honest and flawed and it's funny yet tragic all at the same time without being heavy-handed. At the center of the story is the father-daughter relationship and I liked the script because I thought that relationship was very true. It wasn't uh, glossed over or made sugary. It was a real father and daughter, a teenage daughter, and sometimes they clash and they get angry with each other. Anything exciting going on in school today? Seriously, Dad. Finally, now she responds to me. Do not call me she. Tommy Cuffley and Harriet in Birmingham. And now we've got a message from Jules in York who says, my dad talks like a sexist pig. How do I get him to leave me alone? So it's a beautiful story of how they get past their grief. It's a slice of life that we all know, where you lose someone that you love, and they're trying to get through that, get past that. And also you have a teenage girl who's becoming a woman, and a father who's dealing with the loss of his wife, the only woman he's ever loved. And so to get beyond that, they have to repair their relationship. But in our movie, it's so funny the way they do it. When I read the script, right away, I saw the potential of the film. Because it's a beautiful story, it's got emotion, it's got a, a funny moment. Uh, and also we wanted to make a Christmas movie and uh, York is such a wonderful uh, city to shoot in. I say let's do it and let's do it in York. So I got the script sent to it by Philippe Martinez last summer and he sent it across and said oh, we got the script from these writers in America, we would like to reset it in York. Um, I'm, a, I'm a York native, so this, this is my hometown. We sit in York, we want to make it a Christmas film, and we just want to give it, maybe to give it a bit more feeling, a bit more emotion. I play David, Olivia plays Jules, my daughter, and uh, our, my wife, her mother, passed away two years ago and we're trying to navigate during Christmas. And it's a comedy, and it's also about grief. She's a normal teenage girl. She's sarcastic. She... I would don't want to say bratty, because I don't think she's bratty. She just, she knows that she wants to get something done, and then she's trying to figure out how to do it. What I love about Sarah is that she's very straight talking, very down to earth. You know, she'll say things that you don't want to hear. And I haven't played a character like her that's just so down to earth. And her and Jeremy have a, a relationship that she looks after him. So sometimes there's a little bit of tension. I got a little crap. Hold on. Yeah, you just hold that. Hold that. Just pull it. There we go. Uh, is she intelligent? Yeah, fiercely. But she's always been there for them. They have a history. Sarah's a, she's a salt of the earth character, as they say, up north. I think Emma is outspoken. She's outgoing. She has a complete personality of her own and She's a trend setter and not a trend follower. Um, she she's just she has a, such a big personality that's been so much fun to to portray. So it's all about Mick is the most amazing person to have ever worked with. I couldn't have asked for a more comforting, welcoming director and someone who who could guide me better. Working with Nick, he really pushes you to get the best performance. 
uh, especially with Jules, there's her emotional journey throughout the film is very up and down. You'll see her crying and laughing and, and Mick really pushes the boundaries of to get that perfect performance, which I really have loved working with as an actor. It was, it was so helpful. Mick Davis is a really great director for a number of reasons. He creates an atmosphere where you feel incredibly comfortable to play. Yeah, we'll try to get, here's what you do. When he tries to get through the middle, squeeze up. He tries to go to your, to your left shoulder, squeeze up. Right. But don't just, just keep singing with big smiles on your face. Are you singing out to the You're singing how you're singing that. And he also has great suggestions that he's not overbearing with. He'll come in and throw something in that's just perfect. He likes to sit back and watch and then come in with these great suggestions that will really add a lot of different dimensions and color and maybe a little humor when we didn't know it was there and do we dare attempt it? Yes, you do. And he's just a great calming force, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And cut, cut there. And what I like about the way that Mick and Jeremy work is that they adapt it to suit the situation. So it's a very organic way of working. It's very fluid. Uh, it just requires of you to be loose. And he comes up with very personal touches and comedic touches. He is very good with the comedy. Every film has to come a little bit from the heart. As a producer, there are some movies that you're producing that are not necessary. This one was a little jewel for me. You know, I, I knew I wanted to make that movie because I knew that it was a beautiful story, um, very warm, a great uh, relationship, daughter, father, unique relationship that I felt uh, I would love to make that film. The casting process took us a while. We knew we had to shoot at Christmas, so it added stress to the casting process in order to get a, an actor, an internationally recognised actor, who was going to be available before, before and after Christmas. Well, the first part that we casted actually was the, the Ada, plays Emma, because I wanted to have someone that has a huge personality and she did an audition and right away I said, okay, it's her. Then it took us a while to find Jules because we wanted Jules to be like, obviously it's a key part in the relationship between the father uh, and, and the daughter. And when we found Olivia, she was wonderful. And then the last one to cast was actually uh, David, uh, that played by uh, Jeremy. He's brilliant, and he's a comic. And his chemistry with my young actress, Olivia, who plays his daughter, is unbelievable. Jolie Richardson. And she comes in, and she gives me another layer between her and Jeremy. And their relationship is so hilarious, the way they go at each other. God, I'm lucky, because I got the perfect cast. aspect has been really right on. Even shooting in York, you know, we're in their space, you know, we're filming outside along the beautiful river and, you know, people are out there and they're enjoying their days off and walks with their dogs and their family and they're very respectful. doing this film I think I learned that it's good to ask for help when if you're struggling you don't really see Jules ask for any help until the end I wish everyone had a bit of Emma in them because she's just 
She's so full of life and just so happy and 100% authentically her and she doesn't care what other people think about her. Fill a page and stand by me If thou knowest it's telling Yonder peasant who is he And what is I played a lot of characters that, like Shakespeare says, sound and fury signifying nothing. Like, they're, they're, they're very boisterous and over the top. And this was a chance to play a real human being. And um, this character is probably closer to me than any character I've ever played, so I'm just really lucky to play him. Preparing for the role of Jules, I took a, quite a bit of inspiration from my little sister. She's 14. Um, and you'll see her come home from school and she'll just be like throwing all this information about, oh, this person was arguing about this and this teacher, oh, she's, a, you know, whatever. So I took a lot of inspiration from her just in the energy as a, as a, as a teenager. Because when I was younger, I was quite like, uh, I wasn't really bothered, I didn't really speak to anyone. And to have that energy behind it. Um, also just thinking back to when I was at school and all the different personalities that I had in my school trying to find the connection with Jules and stuff. And luckily, I've never gone through a close um, loss of a family member, apart from maybe grandparents or something, but when I was very young. Um, so I asked my mum about when her dad passed away. She was quite young. Um, and how families, they try to come together, but sometimes it doesn't always work out. So it was difficult, but a challenge. And I learned more about the role at being on set as well. I prepared for this role by um, obviously, I, I talked to Mick in advance. Um, I did research on on um, kind of the the story and the characters. I asked a lot of questions in the beginning, and of course, as soon as I got the script, I read it um, a few times to kind of get not only not only to memorize the lines, obviously, but to kind of get a feel for Emma as a person uh, and understand her backstory and you know. Where, she, where she's come from, what she's done in her life, so that I could really build a character that was three-dimensional and had a more, a more sense of, you know, a, I think Emma's a very relatable character. I mean, I hope she's a very relatable character, and I think that I really wanted to show that on camera and make sure that everyone who's watching um, kind of gets a feel for that. Um, so I read the script multiple times. Um, I... I always asked questions, um, especially to Mick, um, would it be good if we put this in here or with all kinds of little propositions that I thought could build the character and I think that really helped um, kind of convey and evoke her sense and, and who she is, which is what it's all about really. My relationship with David, so we're old, old friends, we once, we once had a relationship together. I, I think it's it's lovely in the story that exes can be friends. And me personally in my life, I love being friends with my exes. It makes me feel that uh, whatever love we've shared with someone, we can carry on, albeit in a different format. So yes, it's possible to be uh, friends with your exes. It requires a little bit of work. And what, if anyone's hurt, you can't do it. Or if your ego is being spiked, you can't do it. But it's great to be friends with your exes. I think the biggest challenge for me, given that it is a comedy, I'm not a comic writer myself, I think that, at least when I started, that was my biggest fear. Am I going to make it funny enough? Is it going to make people laugh? Um, I think that working with Mick, the director, is a big help with that because he, is, he has more of a comic background than I do. And yeah, I think that, that was the biggest challenge in my head, at least. And also trying to, again, weave or interweave between the emotion and the comedy and keeping it as um, and keeping that, getting that balance right in the way a film like About Time or The Big Sick does it so successfully. Um, that's what we were going for, something which weaves emotion and humour effortlessly together. So much history in York. Visually, it's just incredible. It's a feast. And um, I, I just can't believe they don't film here more. I mean, the secret's going to get out. It's just, it's like this, this hidden jewel. Um, and we're really lucky to be here. Everyone's on top of their game. Um, and we're, we're getting a lot of work done fast because everyone's so focused and professional, and it's really a dream come true for me. I love it. Watching all these wonderful, talented people and all these great people in this city of York who came and 
stood for 12 hours for 10 minutes on film or whatever it is. And the joy of working with a great crew. And also the uh, surreal feeling of this movie. Even though it's grounded in the reality of loss and love and pain and heartbreak and comedy and everything else, it's kind of surreal because there's something magical about it. So it's the magic that I'm hanging on to. Wonderful to watch actors of the quality of Jeremy and Jolie working, working together. It reminds me when we worked with the late Sir John Hurt and when he was on set with Charles Dance, you had two great actors who just spark off each other and create a wonderful environment. Look, when you produce a movie, the, the biggest, one of the biggest challenges is how it's going to play out between the cast, you know. Uh, Jules, uh, Emma, um, and then of course uh, Jeremy and, and Jolie. And one of the great things of that film is that the chemistry between all the actors was beautiful, immediately. It's like they were a family before they even met. So that's what drives this film. And that's really the, the, the luck that we had on the film, is how fortunate we were that the chemistry between all of them was so beautiful.